Okay, uh, now we're going to look at the supply. We just looked at the demand, now we're going to look at supply. So the supply curve is, is from the households. So here the households are, are supplying the labor. So this again is backwards of a product market. So in the labor market, the households are the suppliers. And we're going to find that this is upward sloping. So what that means, we're going to we'll draw this here. And we'll, we'll put the so we've got our wages, we've got our amount of labor, and we find this is upward sloping. So that when the wages are higher, um, there's more people willing to work. And this is some particular uh, labor market. So this is not all labor put together, but this is some labor market. For example, this could be uh, this could be factory. Okay, so people that work in a production line. So when the wages are higher, more people will be willing to work for this thing. So the the um, the reason why is it's it's this one is like think a little bit more straightforward. So this is um, upward sloping, right? We can describe this as being upward sloping. So higher wages, they want to work more. So basically, the idea is well, the the higher wages um, attract more people to want to do this job. It's a basic idea. And two places they could come from, well, they could come from uh, come from home or school. So maybe right now they're staying home. Uh, maybe they are staying home uh, because they uh, staying home to take care of somebody. Uh, maybe they're staying home because they're uh, early retirement or some other thing. Or maybe they're in school. And then um, if if wages get really high in this area, they might decide to change their plan and they might decide to enter the labor market. Um, they could also be switching from other profession, professions, okay? So maybe um, right now you're driving uh, Uber and then the job in your area, this is probably not going to happen, but let's suppose it does. There starts to be a big growth in production and there are uh, more and more jobs available at high wages in this manufacturing industry and so you switch from driving uber and you get a job at a factory right because uh it's paying more when the when the when the wage was lower you weren't willing to do this job because maybe you didn't really like it or or maybe you thought it was uh less flexible but when the wage gets high enough then you become willing to do it so uh that part's pretty simple so that, that that's pretty simple so now what we want to do next is we want to put the two sides together okay so we're going to put together our demand and our supply and we'll define the equilibrium. So here's our wage, and then that's the number of workers. And we've got our demand, and we got our supply. Okay, and so then this special point here, we can label it here, is W star, is an equilibrium. So what makes it an equilibrium? So this is this point right here is our equilibrium. So let's talk about well, why is this an equilibrium? Okay, so equilibrium is this, it's, a, it's a stable. So what it means is, well, if we reach this point, then our amount of labor supplied is the same as the amount of labor demanded, right? So we don't have any extra going on. So this equilibrium is the, it's this, this, the special, this is the special wage, and that's why I called it uh, W star, where the supply of labor and the demand of labor become the same. Okay, so then it'll be an equilibrium because people that want jobs can find them and uh, people that need to hire somebody can find a worker at that wage. Now, uh, the question we could ask, and right now we're assuming everything is flexible. We might come back later in the course and talk about um, things like uh, if there's some kind of rules on, on wage setting, we won't do that right this second. Um, so then let's suppose our wage was set above that. Right, so let's suppose we have this W uh, prime, which is greater than our W star. So the equilibrium wage is like 10 bucks an hour, and it's uh, for for factory workers, or 12 12 dollars an hour, let's say. And you set the and the instead the wage is is fixed at some uh, number like 16. So what's going to happen? Well, at this wage, then our supply will be huge because a lot of people want to work, but uh, the demand will be less because now the workers are more expensive. So for those three reasons we saw, they're, they're going to want to hire less. But the, the cost will go up, which will reduce the scale, and they might substitute uh, machines or other things for the, for the workers. Um, and also we have the fact that this, they might think these extra workers are just not worth that much okay? because they're not, they're not producing enough. So then we, we end up here with a situation. We have, um, we have a surplus, right? We have a surplus. 
So we have this. This means uh, in this case we have our labor supply will be greater than our labor demand, and so we end up with an excess supply, otherwise known as a surplus. Okay. So this is our excess supply situation, or or we can call it a surplus situation. And then uh, you you can see I, I won't put it on the graph, but maybe uh, ah, what the heck I can I can put it on the graph. Um, Okay, so hope, hopefully this is clear. Let me, let me do one more thing real quick. Okay, let me bring it down here and do one more thing. And if you had any issue with that, you might want to back up and watch that part again. Um, so our wage, our labor. Okay, so there's our equilibrium. Now let's say, well, what would happen if we get some other wage? I'll just call this one double prime, which is less than our equilibrium wage. So we have some wage down here, right? So what's going to happen then? Well. Um, the, it, it's helpful to, to if you think about these using basically common sense. So, well, you're a firm and the workers are really cheap, uh, and let's assume nothing else changed. The workers are the same uh, capabilities as before. Well, you're going to want to hire more people, right? It's pretty cheap now. Um, sorry, wrote the wrong thing. That's demand. I almost tricked myself. And but now the wages are really low, and you might say, ah, it's not worth it to pay for daycare. I'd rather stay home with my kids. Or you say, well, I'll stay in school a little bit longer because I won't make much um, anyways if I leave if I leave school at this at this time. So, anyways, we end up with labor demand being less than labor supply, and so we have what we call excess demand. Yep. So we, we end up with this excess demand situation. Um, so there will be a, a lot of demand, but um, Nobody wants, not enough workers want to work at this. So if if it's a free market, then these wages would adjust. So in this case of the excess demand situation, um, if it was a free market, we would see, uh, so a free market, wages would rise. If this is a free market, we would expect uh, wages will rise back to W star. Right, because this situation doesn't work when the, the the firms can't find workers, then eventually they'll have to raise the wages until they can. Um, there might be some processes that make this part a little bit this make this a little bit slow, uh, but we'd eventually figure eventually we would we would start heading towards W star uh, when we have this situation where people just can't find the workers uh, that they need at the current wages. Um, going back to the one above, the one above we would also expect then here we would expect that uh, it will wage will fall to W star because these people who want jobs and can't find them um, uh, will start to take lower wages if possible and so, so that's why this W star is kind of the stable point because in both cases of the excess supply and excess demand the market forces will tend to push us uh, back towards this point so uh, hopefully that's clear um, I would suggest you go ahead and take a little bit a look at the textbook and the next video, I'll just give a couple of examples of this.